Today, we are joined by Dhor Barlev, Sales and Business Development Director at Allegro AI. As a provider of operational tools for machine learning, Allegro AI empowers data scientists to get better products faster and improve the world around us. My name is Raymond de Weijze, and I am here on behalf of the Support Center for Data Sharing, together with my colleague Esther Huyer. The Support Center for Data Sharing is an EU initiative that focuses on researching, documenting, and showcasing data sharing practices. With data, we refer to the exchange, with data sharing, we refer to the exchange of information between organizations, both public and private. And we believe that the potential of data can only be unlocked when shared. To make this possible, we provide technical and legal support to organizations that wish to share data. In addition, we showcase examples of data sharing initiatives, best practices, and tools. It is in that setting that we host this interview today. Before we get into questions, Dhor, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, good day to you. Thank you, Raimonda. Thank you, Esther, for having me here. Um, the vision of uh, ClearML set out many years ago was to enable data science, especially machine learning and deep learning, uh, whereas there was an early understanding of the challenge of gathering enough data, of sharing data. And so by functional design, the system was uh, developed such that it would allow to overcome some of these difficulties. And I'm, I'm very happy to be here and be able to share with you the concepts. Nice. Thank you for that. Esther, uh, I didn't touch upon it yet, but would you like to introduce yourself as well? Thanks, Ray. Um, well, great to have you here, Draw. Very, very happy to learn more about you and ClearML. Um, my name is Esther Huya. I'm from the Support Center for Data Sharing, focusing on um, how can we create value with data um, by reusing it. And machine learning, deep learning, and AI is obviously one of the very important fields for us. So great to know more about it from you. Thanks. Thank you for that. Um, Dora, would you maybe like to share um, what Allegro AI is and how uh, its idea came into being, uh, which problem helped it create uh, that? All right, let me try to uh, share with you uh, one of the tabs. Just a few slides, visuals always help us to uh, um, get the picture. No, oh, sorry. Uh, share. And, uh, just tell me if you can see my, uh, yeah, my presentation. Yeah, All right. So. Um, I'll just move on to the second slide. The idea of, of ClearML is to give the data scientists, but also data engineers, uh, product managers, uh, IT people, uh, all the people working around uh, developing and deploying uh, a machine learning or a deep learning model, uh, the tools to work with. Um, and without getting into the separate functionalities and, and the different uh, tools that are available, um, I'd like to go to the uh, topic of, of data. Uh, we all know that data is key, data is a new oil, uh, data is, is the goal that we query in order to, to produce uh, value. Um, from the beginning, the understanding was that not everybody was going to share their data. Um, and thereby, the system was designed for zero data move. Zero data move means uh, that the data is going to be protected. It is already somewhere stored, probably encrypted with certain uh, access rights already set. Let's leave that there. And let's try to do the work of, uh, of the data scientists and, and their team outside of this. Um, and, and this, I think, approaches not just GDPR, but let's look at industries like healthcare, hospitals who are not allowed to, to give out certain data, uh, but also defense and aerospace, where people are very sensitive to the security of the data uh, for uh, other reasons, uh, but can also be some very competitive industries like uh, autonomous uh, systems, whether it's uh, cars or robots, where companies see uh, the necessity to uh, protect what they're doing from a competitive point of view, and yet they still have some shortage of 
of data or of know-how, and they have to work with uh, people inside their organizations across continents. Think about Europe and the United States, or with uh, organization uh, with companies uh, and entities outside their organization. Uh, think about a consulting company or a, a contractor or a university. Uh, and they all have the same issue. What do we do with the data? It's sensitive. Uh, we don't want to push it around. We don't want to store it on multiple uh, uh, systems. Um, and with this idea, I'll go into a maybe technical uh, picture. Uh, ClearMail was developed such that it's actually three pieces of software. There's a software that is installed where the data scientist or data engineer or product manager is working. And that is also the person who would have access to the data. The data could be somewhere completely else, but that is the person who has the rights to use certain data. There's the crunching, uh, some GPU, some CPU, it can be on-prem, it can be cloud, it can be hybrid, it can be any combination, edge or whatever. And the third piece of software is a management software. It's a monitoring software. It's where you have the tools, the versioning, you do the data tracking, uh, you monitor and register the metadata and the hyperparameters and the results of the experiments and where they're deployed and the CICD uh, workflow automation. And these are separated. By separating these, we can go a step further and think, okay, what can we do if the person managing orchestra or, or let's say orchestrating and, and working for the workflows doesn't have access to the data. They would maybe have access to the hyper data in the model, so they could share that. The data would stay where it is. Think about two hospitals trying to work uh, in oncology, for example, on interpreting certain uh, images. The data would stay in the hospital, but the model would come to the data. And I think that is also a well-known concept. Models come to the data is a kind of data sharing not in the sense that I give you my data, but I give you the value of the data. And so I have one problem less. I don't have to duplicate the data and I don't have to transfer it. And I still have full rights over it. I can still collaborate with other people who have another expertise or who have their own data. Um, this sounds very nice in principle, but we also went and, and tested it with uh, actually in semiconductor industry, uh, for that reason back in 2019, where one customer has his data, uh, the other customer has her data, and there's installation of software, and they, through back propagation, we're able to exchange the models. Uh, customer number one sends his models to be trained on the data of customer number two, and she can do the same. And in the end, each gets a better model to recognize for example, certain images or videos, or can also be NLP, anything textual and audio or um, text files, uh, without the data actually being exchanged. Um, we believe that this concept can, can help a lot. Uh, we believe that first, it can allow people to evaluate the value of the data of another organization before they actually go to exchanging data. So it can be a pre-step uh, to build trust. Trust in, do I actually want to do this? I mean, is this interesting? <laughs> or maybe I'm just wasting my time. Um, and the next can be, do I really have to exchange the data or can I only work together on it? That would be a different step or next step. So in a sense, it's complementary to the classical exchange of data. It can be a pre-step. It can also be an alternative. Um, and all of this is supported thanks to uh, the vision that was there from the beginning that not everybody is going to exchange the data with each other. Thanks for showing that. Um, the way I understand it is that um, the data um, in the example that you just gave uh, from the both customers is still in their hands. Is that is that correct? So ClearML facilitates infrastructure to be able to to work on it, to uh, execute models, uh, but not so much uh, have the data. Right, the customers are still 
owners exactly. of the data. Exactly. It's it's uh, it. You can exchange the data. However, you have the possibility not to exchange it. Only mm -hmm. the value of the data through the metadata um, and the hyperparameters and the results of the experiments. So you mm -hmm. first see what it what is in there, uh, and then as a second step, you can, if you wish, do federated. Uh, experimenting or learning means sending your model to the other data, but you already know exactly which data uh, you're looking for. You've already uh, mm -hmm. sifted through. Of course, there has to be a mechanism for the two entities to agree on the commercial and legal side. That is something we do not deal with. We are only on a technical level. Uh, however, you did not send huge amounts of data through the internet which have to be encrypted and then it's stored somewhere else and you don't have the rights to that other database. You don't know yeah. what somebody is doing with it or not doing with it. You also have to. And so there's no need in this case for any distributed ledger uh, like the Bitcoin technology to encrypt it because you did not send the data. Um, and this is an alternative or a pre-step. Um, think, for example, data provenance. Um, if you did not give your your uh, your partner the data in the source, uh, but that partner has to maybe years later prove to the FDA in the United States or to the MI in, in Europe how they developed a certain drug, uh, and they need to be able to track back to the original data. In such a case, you would have to then commit to store that data and make it auditable to an external body for 10 mm -hmm. years or 20 years, or you would then really have to have an exchange of data. You would duplicate certain parts of the data, only those relevant, mm -hmm. and that would then have to be stored by third party or by some other agreement um, in order to make that, uh, to, to allow the data provenance. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the data provenance is there from the central management system. You know where the data is, you know mm -hmm. what it is, but you can't download it. I would even go a step further. The monitoring software can be anywhere. It can sit on any server. You do not have access to the data. You do not mm -hmm. see the images. You do not see the videos. You do not. See, you only see the description, the labels, the tags, mm -hmm. the hyperparameters, uh, and that means you are. You, you have here um, the option for third-party providers to 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 do the IT administration mm -hmm. without them ever having a say about the data itself. Mm -hmm. I have one question. Sorry, um, and um, well, on a on a theoretical level, we are discussing more and more about um, who is responsible for the learning of the algorithms. Right, a, a consultant, for example, goes to a client, sees confidential information, and then three months later, is at the next client and will not share that confidential information, but the learning from it, because there is an ethical standard to it. Um, an algorithm has no ethical standard. So in practice, do you also see this problem or is it a theoretical construct? Uh, I think that is mostly a commercial issue. Um, you do have other technology, again, in general ledger types of technology that you could also encrypt um, or not encrypt. You could also protect the model, the algorithm. Uh, and put certain rights on it, just as you would do with data. Um, there are some companies, uh, I know a few startups that are developing such a solution, um, but we are, so, uh, ClearML does not go that direction to the legal and commercial, we ignore it. Uh, and we also don't have uh, the general ledger kind of technology. Uh, that is then a very good uh, question that has to be solved by a different uh, type of expert. But you don't see it in the market for, for your customers. You don't see the demand currently. No. Um, for example, uh, we have customers who have um, teams of data scientists sitting in Europe and the United States, but it's the same corporate. So for them, it's not a problem. We have hospitals working and they are being financed by government. So for them to be able to develop a better healthcare, it's not about the money or the rights. It's they, they would want to have it public. Uh, and then we have customers who have an external consultant or um, or some subcontractor and they write in their agreement that that subcontractor has no right to um, 
to the model or the algorithm, and then it's based on a commercial agreement that they would be then acting criminally because it would, um, you know, IPR rights are protected mostly on paper, uh, but you move the software everywhere and, and you can't really protect it unless you find out that somebody has committed a, a crime and then you take them to court. So that problem with the data model and the data algorithm is no different than any other IPR for software. Sometimes you have compiled software that you can encrypt and protect, but I mean, it's pretty much based on, on the legal framework that already exists today because that's not data. It's an algorithm, it's a piece of software with certain data elements that have been trained through it. Thank you. You mentioned uh, an example of a, a project you did for a semiconductor um, uh, sector, right? Um, what kind of industries do you typically serve? Well, uh, we uh, ClearWell supports both uh, structured data and unstructured data, whereas it was designed for unstructured data. So most of our customers are working with images, videos, uh, NLP, whether it's audio files or text files, um, radar, LIDAR, um, MRIs, X-ray machines, um, these kind of applications. And that means mostly healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, it means um, uh, computer vision, anybody working with computer vision uh, in robotics. Uh, it means autonomous systems, drones, robotics, uh, automotive industry. Um, it's um, also um, retail and media where they have a huge amount of, of, of media. Um, and they're doing a lot of computer vision as well. Uh, it's uh, banks with NLP. A lot of banks are digitalizing and and um, trying to improve their services uh, using uh, natural language processing. Mm -hmm. um, these are the kind of interests because we differentiate ourselves mostly through the uh, support of deep learning and unstructured data. As for the um, uh, semiconductor industry, they're doing a lot of quality control on their um, production lines, also using cameras and other sensors. So that was the application for one semiconductor. Mm -hmm. And the other one I mentioned was actually really the principle of um, federated learning. Does it work or does it not work? That was back in 2019 uh, because they were actually, uh, they're producing CPUs and they are having them on edge devices, and these are weak devices. You, you mostly want a big GPU for these applications. There says, okay, what if we have a, a horde, a whole set of CPUs all over the place? Can we uh, not just do the training? Can we also do the inference as a kind of federated uh, shared resources? And that is something we are also now applying to a telecom company that has a lot of distributed computers out there, actually they're telecom masts, um, mm -hmm. and they have a bottleneck on the communication line. They can't transfer huge amounts of data because they have to keep that open for for our WhatsApp messages and, and telephone calls. Um, so that is also the idea that I need a monitoring system centrally, mm -hmm. but I cannot move the data around. It's zero data move. I can only move a reduced size and the algorithm, the model is much more reduced file compared to the yeah, huge amounts of data effect. out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. What are some of the trends that you see in this field now? Because you mentioned, well, a couple of techniques. LLP is quite pre predominant image processing. Um, from, um, I don't know when uh, ClearML was set up, but I'm guessing. Uh, 2016, uh, okay. a bit early for the market, uh, mm -hmm. very visionary. Around 2018, uh, things started to heat up, and today, every week, you'll hear of a new, a new MLOps uh, solution out there. So yeah. I, I think uh, a lot of the corporates we've been talking to have been dealing with this since 2010, 11, 12, the bigger ones with big resources. Um, today, any startup can, you know, quite easily sign up for ClearML and start working without having to build up all the tech stack that was mm -hmm. necessary 10 years ago and only large corporations could allow themselves. But do startups have a well, significant amount of data that would allow well, for machine learning to even be possible? Because you need big data to be able to do that, right? Do startups already have that? Big uh, startups uh, have uh, a huge challenge there. 
Uh, they also have another challenge is they have they enjoy less trust. So if they go to a hospital, they enjoy less trust in a big organization with a name. So they have two challenges uh, uh, compared to, let's say, bigger, uh, well-known organizations. Uh, they do have the advantage of speed that, um, mm -hmm. you know, if, if we see what if some of our startups clients are achieving to reach a product, whether it's NLP or computer vision, and, uh, the, with all their challenges, if they find one customer with half of the sufficient data. Uh, I definitely see that startups are going to be one of your biggest customers for the European mm -hmm. data sharing program because they simply don't have the money or the resource or the access or the reputation to get to that data. And that's going to be a huge advantage for them. Uh, I think for big organizations, um, it will be the opposite maybe. The access through the data exchange to these startups uh, to find out who can help them move faster. Uh, large organizations also have bigger challenges, let's say if you think about automotive, autonomous driving, even the largest OEMs don't have enough data to make mm -hmm. L3 or L4, never, um, forget L5, realistic in the next years. So they're creating synthetic data by simulating it, uh, but they would still love to have access to their competitors' data of the vehicles, you know, driving around collecting data. So there's a huge potential of data exchange as a principle, and I hope that you make a quick progress and everybody will be able to enjoy it. There's something for everybody in there. And of course, for the consumers, you know, for us citizens yeah. <laughs> in the end who get better products. Yeah, and automotive, that's really starting now. Right, with one of the first data spaces in in German automotive sector, so we're curious what comes out of there. Uh, I saw on your website that you have um, a great list of use cases explaining uh, and exemplifying um, the benefits. Um, I I read through a few, like the the, the Philips one, um, the Philips algorithm team. Do you have a favorite use case where you say that's amazing what you and them reach together? Okay, uh, I have to think. I think if you look also uh, at two others, the theater are doing uh, computer vision and operation rooms. So they're helping doctors by giving them another set of eyes uh, to observe what they're doing. Uh, what I liked there was um, one, of course, there's the issue of data sensitivity, but also automation. So they've been able to use ClearML to build an automated process with the complete CI, CD, uh, uh, loop that, you know, whatever is collected in every new operation goes back, it gets retrained, gets deployed back to the doctors. Uh, I found that very impressive. Uh, yeah, we helped them a little, but it was their concept and, and a lot of hard work from them. Um, that is an interesting one. And another one is Constru, simply because I'm also in sales and Constru actually put a price tag on it. Um, they're a team of about 15 people and they've said that they've been able to double their productivity by having such, such a tool and not having to develop it themselves. And if you think of every data scientist and data engineers being able to be double as productive, uh, then we can really speed up the, the, the pace of, of, you know, artificial intelligence has such a promise and, and we have to deliver. Uh, otherwise, you know, people are not going to finance this and will not be enjoyed the, the products. So they, they're doing um, security in construction sites, smart cities, uh, also a lot of computer vision applications um, being uh, done currently and NLP. I think these are the two major applications that where we see a huge growth in, in the number of ready products and services coming out from these companies. Also, if you think, uh, um, smart cities, uh, as opposed, for example, for Israel, United States, even the UK, where you have cameras everywhere in Europe, people are very sensitive. Um, so um, there again, you have the issue of, of data sharing. Um, even if you share the data, once it's being, you have cameras out there in the field, you don't necessarily want to share the data anymore. You just want the algorithm to work, but you still need a CI/CD process over time. The quality deteriorates, you need to improve that. So by not having to move the data, but just the model, you could actually have citizens' rights protected because the data wouldn't necessarily 
have to leave the camera. No, of course, somebody has to come and look, see if that's actually being done. <laughs> You just mentioned um, Israel, and I, um, I've seen that you, next to your role as sales and business development uh, with Allegro, you also have your own business in Germany and Israel. Does that focus on similar topics? Uh, no, that's completely other topics. I came from aviation and the energy sector and uh, just got uh, very fascinated with what artificial intelligence can do. Um, you start seeing results, working products and services, and it's it's amazing uh, how it's going to change our lives. So uh, ClearMail is, is the product and brand of Allegro Artificial Intelligence LTD from Tel Aviv. Uh, I myself have been living in Germany for many years. We also have uh, some employees in the United States and Canada. So you have a good view internationally on differences in culture towards data sharing, AI, but also innovation. Would uh, you, what's your view there? Well, if you look, for example, in the United States in healthcare, it's similar to Europe. Extremely sensitive hospitals, uh, research centers are not allowed to share the data. And uh, we're actually working with another um, manufacturer, strategic partner, um, who's developing, well, actually, I think I'm now I'm allowed to say it. Uh, NVIDIA, for example, on top of their hardware, are developing also a software stack, especially for healthcare. Uh, and we're part of that project uh, to see how we can bring in federated learning um, in, into that field. Um, in other fields in the United States, you see a lot more openness, um, less on the competitive, less willingness to share with competitors. But if you have a consultant company, a contractor, a subcontractor inside the organizations, uh, people are, the issue of the data sharing is not the central one. Um, so uh, also on the issue of security, security cameras. So there's less of a sensitivity there. Um, however, since a lot of the bigger corporations do have subsidiaries both in Europe and in the United States, to a certain extent, they're going to have to learn what Europe is doing with data. And I think after a while, they want to be, they'll want to be part of it because there's never enough data for a good model. <laughs> so I, but Thank you know, you. I, you'd yeah. have to ask the Americans uh, how they see the, the European. Uh, I've been champion, championing the, the European approach also in, in Tel Aviv at our headquarters uh, because I see um, for Europe it's going to be the way. Um, and you can't skip a continent with 500 million people. So. Thank you. Maybe as a as a final question from our side, um, I know that uh, Allegro AI is still relatively young, but um, where would you see yourself, say, five years from now? If everything goes well, uh, within uh, the next year or two, we'll be reaching the, the hyper growth phase. Uh, we have now, um, I have to mention this, ClearML is open source. It's free. You can download it. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and we live off of the uh, managed services, uh, software developments, software enhancements around the open source. Uh, we're mm -hmm. seeing very large growth in the downloading and use of the open source. We're having a growing community. We're seeing more questions being asked. More than 1,500 organizations around the world have already downloaded it and are asking questions, are active users. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, we, we hope that uh, we will also then reach the, the hyper uh, growth phase in the next three years. That means that in five years, we hope to be uh, enabling um, machine learning and deep learning with very low uh, entry barriers, even to people who are less professional uh, all across the world. Uh, and hopefully we'll also have a lot of uh, federated learning uh, use cases by then so that we can be part of the data sharing with a bit of a different approach and a bit of a different uh, solution to the to the challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else you would like to address that we that we haven't touched upon? Uh, no, but uh, I'm very excited about what is being uh, done in Europe about data sharing. Every customer you talk to, there's always an issue with getting enough data in the right quality. Um, and uh, I think the approach uh, 
I mean, data is is the new oil, and each citizen is generating data, each one of us, and there has to be some kind of solution where we participate or an organization that has generated data participates in this value generation. Um, and so I'm very curious to see how that develops in the next few years. Will there be two systems, uh, the American and the European, or will there be some kind of synthesis? I don't know, uh, but Europe, Europe is definitely now moving forward in a very serious way. And you see that, uh, like uh, Esther mentioned, everywhere the data sharing centers popping up. Yeah, and the great thing very is data. curious as well. <laughs> yeah, and and data will you cannot use it up, right? So in many ways, it's better than oil. <laughs> that's true, and it's less dirty. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that that's definitely a, a a potential there. Thank you so much. It was uh, really interesting to learn more about what you and what Claire Mal do. Thank you for your time and your interest. Yeah, thank you so thank much you. for being with us today.